guys, I'm Sydney. And I'm Edgar. This is our tiny home. <laughs> this is Vanessa, 2011 Mercedes Sprinter, 144 inch wheelbase. We've kind of got a deal out of it, so we ended up just getting this one versus another brand, but. Yeah, we just got, we found a good price in Virginia, so we just shipped it from Virginia to Indiana and then we started the build. Yes, I would yes. say that we're happy with it. All right, so the, our countertop is actually a door for, that was like $35 from the 1940s that one of our friends found. So, and then we put a walnut stain on it. So then we have our mini fridge. It's a 3.2 cubic foot mini fridge. So it's a little bit bigger than ones that you might see in a typical build. We have a chef in the house, so we had to have a big fridge. <laughs> so our fridge and our induction burner is run off of two batteries, which are the power storage right in here. We have a pure sign inverter that's 3,000 watts, a charge controller in here as well, and then our waste tank is in the back of this that just drains out of the bottom of the van. So anytime that we use our water, it's just draining out of the bottom so that we don't have to fill that up. Probably the only reason we I went towards it was because I knew that we were going to have the solar panels and a lot of power from the batteries, so I knew it would be able to utilize some of that energy. I didn't want to mess around with propane and stuff like that because what I'm trying to do in the van is cook fairly often, so I don't want to keep changing out propane tanks and stuff like that, so I'd rather just have a continuous source of power for the... And it keeps costs down, which is nice. Like, yeah. we don't ever have to go out and buy propane or, like, stop cooking because we don't have enough propane or something like that. It's always just free and it's already in here. So the great part about the induction burner is you can either use from 200 watts up to, I think it's 2200 watts, mm -hmm. depending on what you're cooking and how long you want to cook for. So you, there's various settings you can use to minimize your consumption or if you're going to cook for a very long time to go for a very long period of time. We have 400 watts of solar up on the top. I honestly, I think for what we have yeah. that uses consumption, we ended up with a perfect amount of power yeah. and storage. And for, so what, for what we use in a day, we can literally hang out in the van all day, use the stove, use the lights, use the... Use the fridge. Use the fridge the is fridge. on all day. Yeah, so. And yeah, we have no issues with it. Even on a cloudy day with the solar panels that we have, they do get charged up a little. And then between that and then if like the power goes low, we can just turn the car on. And since it's connected to the battery, the car battery as well, then it'll just charge it the rest of the way. So because of that, I guess, dual system, I, we don't ever really run out of power, yeah. which is... That's, so we're that's getting, awesome. <laughs> we're getting the source from the, from the actual car battery and then the solar that it just, re just keeps recharging all day. Yeah. So we have vinyl plank flooring from Home Depot. Um, I think it was like $120 all in. We did it because it was really easy and because we just really liked the look and super durable, which was surprising. We didn't know how well it would actually work inside the van once we were living in it, but it's been great. It hasn't scratched at all. And we've kind of slid stuff on the floor a few times. We walk in our shoes and stuff like that. It's very easy to maintain and clean. Yeah, super easy to clean. I mean, you just literally sweep everything out of the side, so. Yeah, we love the flooring so far. So I've been a chef for about 14 years now. So I, part of what I wanted to do with the van was cook. So I had to bring my babies along. This is obviously a butcher knife. This is actually one of my favorite knives. It's a Japanese slicing knife. I didn't re really realize how bumpy it was going to be. And so I didn't, I had a few um, accidents with the knives where they had to like came crashing down and fall on the floor. But um, our simple and free remedy for that was add, adding a pillow while we drive so we literally just put the pillow there and even if the knife slips this far it'll stay there just because the pillow's <laughs> holding it up so it's a free and easy hack to keep the knives well i'm probably cooking 100 percent of the time myself um not that i want sydney to or not that she wants to but <laughs> he's the uh, chef <laughs> but uh, i mean at the end of the day that's my lady says I'm the chef. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I wanted to cook in the van was to save some money. Just because I've been doing it for so long I can kind of work around like certain ingredients and certain recipes mm -hmm. in order to make them cheap. And So we're probably eating out of the van 80% of the time. We'll probably go get a sandwich here and there but I'm cooking inside the van. Days. I mean, we picked it out, but we like, yeah, they installed the lights and stuff. It's just a ship. It was very ceiling. collaborative. Yeah. yeah, it was very collaborative. <laughs> it was a team effort for sure. The way, oh, yeah. walls and ceiling, all shiplap. Um, obviously, besides all the insulation that was beforehand. Uh, our friends are um, contractors, so they helped us build out the van. And part of what we wanted from them was a bookshelf. So it was kind of uh, back and forth between us and the contractors because we had no idea where a bookshelf can actually fit. Uh, it was complicated up until the end where we were just like we have this 
what is it like two square feet of space so we were just like why don't we just put add the yeah. bookshelf there at that point we had just kind of run out of places to put it yeah so we wanted i wanted i was dedicated to having the bookshelf run in the back with these cabinets but the builder said that that would cut the view too much so we they didn't they wouldn't let me do it even though it's our van yeah. but i didn't care i trust them and so yeah they ended up installing just a smaller bookshelf over here in the kitchen which works because he does have a lot of cookbooks so we can display those nicely in the kitchen. It was a very like democratic process, I would say, because <laughs> they would put their input and then we would come forward with our input and then we were kind of, you know, okay, that might not work, but we like that idea from you guys. And that's kind of how we um, went about it. So trust your builders. They know what they're doing too. Yeah. But also, I mean, we put pressure on them a couple times um, oh, yeah. just because like, there, there is some things, I guess, when you're working with someone else, they'll say, oh, but that's going to be easier. And if that's not what you want and you know that what you want is possible, then push for what you want. Our builders did not want us to have an induction burner because it was just going to be more complicated than having something with propane. But, like, I didn't want propane and I knew I didn't want propane. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And, and I mean, they did it. it. We have an yeah. induction burner. It looks great. We love it. And we our filibustered and we, we got Yeah, it. I mean, our electrical <laughs> system can handle it. So, in the same breath, like, definitely trust who you're talking to but if you know it's possible push for what you want because it's your it's your home at the end of the day and i knew i didn't want propane in my home that was just our thing so obviously we have a lot of spots in this van where we can um uh, store stuff um one of the spots is here i have a lot of extra kitchen stuff here and if you go down this way we have a lot of our dry storage i guess pastas and rice and spices and stuff like that that was her i was on her right there that's she prettied it up for me so we installed like a three inch lip along here. Um, a lot of people ask how these mason jars don't fall, but actually the bottom part of them is all the way in behind that lip. So we've never had an issue with any of these falling. We've gone on some really rough roads and we haven't had any problems yet. So that's worked out really well. Um, oh, and then we have our sink here. We wanted a little bit of a bigger sink, but for him having a prep area for his cooking and stuff like that, we went with a little bit of a smaller sink. And then we have our water here on demand so water pump yep so we have a 12 volt water pump that is under here which we can go into this is really just kind of basic kitchen storage stuff so we have a basket with uh, paper plates paper products and things like that um which probably is not the most eco-friendly but we're working our way there um and then we have our fresh water tank here it's a five gallon fresh water tank which um comes straight through the sink with our 12 volt pump which lives right behind oh, this basket but other than that, that's everything. And his pots and pans are back there as well. So that's where he keeps all of his bigger stuff for the kitchen. Most of the time, my method was is kind of just rinse as quickly as possible, like the entire, all the dirty dishes, scrub them out, and then kind of just rinse them again. And I don't know, it just yeah. it works out. You have to work with like a strategy, I guess, with water. Like knowing that you have a limited amount of water and not wanting to buy water constantly or if you're just off grid and you don't have access to a lot, you just kind of have to think of different like strategical ways of using it. Like we've even filled a bot like a bowl with clean water and then just kind of used that to rinse all of our silverware afterwards instead yeah. of washing every single piece of silverware. You just kind of have to think of the random small things that will make it easier and less consumption. I believe it's adequate for us right now. Yeah. I think if we were to add the puppy like we plan on to, <laughs> I think we would up the gallon uh the gallons, but Yeah. We don't really we honestly don't stay off grid like too much. We typically mm -hmm. do hit a city every few days or so, so we've had like no real problems with finding access to water whenever we do need it yeah. but yeah i mean if we planned on staying out in the mountains for a week or two we would have to think of something or we would just have to have extra gallons below the bed which is where mm -hmm. we keep our extra water anyways we don't have, we don't drink from this or anything like that is strictly our sink water our drinking water and like other gallons are we'll show you but it's below the bed so we have the little gate hooks here and the reason i installed them this was the, the guys who build out the van didn't install these because we didn't foresee how um, when we drive and we make right turns, the drawer just slides open. So eventually I got tired of just climbing back here and closing them that I just got some gate hooks for what, 49 cents each and installed them myself and now they like stay closed. So this is pretty much all my kitchen equipment. I have tongs, scissors, I got, I mean pretty much anything you would need to cook up a meal. Here I got a little bit of extra, got um, cooking oil, cooking spray, uh, towels and stuff like that. And then here's kind of our 
I've been calling it our drunk drawer, uh, <laughs> our junk drawer. But it's our silverware, our chopsticks where we have ramen, some tea. We eat a lot of ramen. <laughs> yeah, and then obviously you can't go anywhere without a little bit of ketchup. Yeah, that's another hack. That's a van hack. Don't yeah. ever buy your own ketchup, mustards, ranches, <laughs> yeah. nothing. We we take it all from gas stations and from the places that we are already buying things from. We saw a couple of our now van friends, but people that we were really looking at on Instagram and social media and things like that, and we had heard a couple of them say in their first van they only had cabinets or they only had drawers and that they wish they could have done both in their mm -hmm. van. And so when we started our build, I was like, let's just start with that. We'll have a cabinet, we'll have a few drawers. That way we kind of have options of where we can store stuff and what would be easier to put where. And I really had to pick and choose what I what and could bring to the van in terms of cooking equipment. The reason I chose cast iron as my main cooking vessel was um, it's durable, it lasts long, it retains heat really well, and it heats up really fast, uh, especially with induction burners. So I got the speed and I got the durability and that's kind of what I needed from pots and pans and it works great on campfires. All right, so um, behind all of our kitchen area is our bedroom, dining room area, which we'll show you the transition in a, a minute. Um, so we have additional storage right here where we can just kind of, I've put my shoes in here, but we really just try to maximize every space and we did have a few inches left over here. So we just put in a little bit of extra storage and some shelves. And then we have our portable toilet, which we keep right here while we drive. Um, and it just kind of slides out whenever we need it. It holds 2.5 gallons, which we have to empty like once or twice a week. We've loved having the portable toilet. I would recommend to anybody who's doing the build on a budget and can't afford or doesn't have the space for a full private bathroom, which is kind of a luxury and we would have loved to do that. But um, we just, I mean, with space and money and everything, we chose to just go with a cheaper option of a portable toilet. And it's worked out really well so far, I think. I would do that next time for sure. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah, so I actually, yeah. I make Edgar empty it, but he does it willingly um and yeah the bottom half just kind of comes off and there's a lid on there as well so you don't really see anything and you can just tilt it to the side and it will drain out from the tube that's on the side we are dump cabelas they have um, dump stations so we most of the time we're using dump stations and stuff like that we'll try not to throw it out just random yeah, Parking but we also, we have a pact of only doing certain business in the van and doing our other business and other like places yeah. and gas stations, things like that. Just you do have to modify. I mean, this, you want to make this life as convenient as possible, but it's not going to be the same as living in a typical house. So that's one thing that you will have to sacrifice if you have a portable toilet. We chose to make the decision of, you know, going to gas stations and going to other businesses for, for that. But And honestly, who wants to clean up their own? mess you know? yeah seriously but yeah it's worked yeah. i mean it's really this is mostly for night use and for staying at campsites that don't have facilities and being at places that don't have toilets so we try not to use it all the time and I mean, yeah i mean at night we use it every single night because we don't want to like show i guess that we're living in the van we don't really want to make ourselves a target um so we just like to stay in the van once it gets dark and we use the toilet from then on out so we have the instrument panel here that uh it's connected to all of our lights and stuff around the van this is for our sink over there and most of these lights are run on LED, so they're very durable and they're gonna last a very long time. I like lose a point per point one percentage if I have them all on, uh, but as soon as I turn them back off, it's a very sunny day right now. It'll replenish like five minutes probably. I will say the one thing the guy who built out the van, I thank him for every day, is that he put so many outlets throughout the van, mm -hmm. um, and that's been very helpful. Just because we want to charge our phones or our cameras or we want to do multiple things at once. Just having outlets all over the van really, really helped. He has the outlets running at all times along with the fridge. The batteries have a safety feature and if it gets under, I believe it's 9.8, is it 11? No. Maybe 10. I think it's 9.8. If it gets under 9.8 volts, the safety mechanism kicks in and the power for the light switches. So they all turn off except the fridge. So the fridge, even if the batteries have run to a critical point, the fridge will still keep running up until like obviously the the actual car batteries die off too. Um, so yeah, I guess some of just the more style features, we really wanted it to feel like separate rooms even though it is all one small room. Um, so we really wanted to somehow make the walls look a little bit different. So we chose just a subway tile backsplash for the kitchen just to give it like a good separation, I guess. And then we have the divider here um, with the gray. And then moving into the bedroom, we have our overhead storage, which we split. So this is Edgar's side. He just keeps some like toiletries, extra cameras and chargers 
colors in here. We have a fruit hammock below, which is just kind of a van life signature, I guess. If you live in a van, you just have to have one, <laughs> says social media. And then, like he said, we have a couple of outlets here. And then we have a little Polaroid display as well on the wall, on, made of shiplap. Our bedroom walls are shiplap as well as the ceiling. Depends on what we're doing. If we have guests over, we had a couple a uh, week ago to have dinner with us. So we had the table set up and everything. And um, it works out pretty well. It, you can fit in probably six people semi-comfortably, I would say. So pretty much, we'll take the middle parts, put them off to the side. This is our extra panel. And pretty much... For the table, there's a little bar at the bottom here, and it just keeps it in place. At night, that's mostly for storage, so we keep extra water or some of our dirty laundry and then firewood just in case we were at a campsite or something. Then I'll show you how to maximize all our space. So we have more toiletries on here, in the drawer under our table. Two or three times a week, we were like working out of our van. Um, she's blogging, I'm doing stuff on social media and stuff. Uh, so we'll sit out here, we'll camp here for a little bit. I would say another cool part about the this is that this table comes out of the van. So instead of having like a separate outside table, they installed this in a way where those bars kind of catch it while it's in the van, but it's easy to just like remove out of the van entirely so that we have like an outdoor place to sit as well, Yeah, which is super cool. Uh, so th this here is our uh, vent fan. Uh, our contractors had to cut out a hole, which was very nerve wracking, but they did a fantastic job. It has three speeds. You can only blow air out, uh, not in, and you would have to have a window or a door cracked just to get the airflow. Um, but it's been working fantastic. We just had a pretty hot day a couple days ago and it kept us cool in here. And then we're gonna show you a little bit more extra storage space that we have. So right under our seats, we'll take these out of the way. And again, I like to use the, the fence hooks, the gate hooks I mean, just because they're very convenient and super cheap. And then right here is pretty much all my clothes. More towards the back, I have a lot more camping gear and stuff like that. I have hammock and uh, camping bag and stuff like that. So we're trying to <laughs> utilize as much as the space that we have. We have to be very, very organized in order <laughs> to have all the stuff that we have in here. The same thing is on both sides, except it, that's her side and that's my side. Okay. <laughs> So we keep it kind of separate, so we both have different organizational standards. As in, he has an organizational standard, and I don't. <laughs> That's how that goes. So this is kind of our like garage space where we put all of our shoes and extra stuff. This is like some just flour and like the random things that we don't use as often, so they didn't make the cut for the kitchen. And then, I mean, this is just like we have some like hanging lights and just. Just this is kind of the stuff that we don't use, I guess, every single day that we need access to from inside the van. So we just kind of filled it oh. that way. If you're in the van and you it's freezing outside or if it's raining, you can access it from behind and lift this up if needed. But it's not the easiest thing in the world. I would suggest for anybody building, if you're gonna do that, to make it come up from the other side. So hinge it on the far side so that you can lift it up easier from inside because it's kind of a pain to lift that with the door, with these back doors closed sitting inside. Um, just to make it, I guess, feel a little bit more like a home. I, <laughs> Everybody, I feel like, has to have a full length mirror. This was something I got made fun of for a lot, but it really comes in handy when we're going somewhere, you're actually doing something that's not at a national park and you want to look nice. I feel like you kind of need to know what you look like. So I use this all the time and when uh, we have a couple chairs in the van as well. So if it's a really sunny day and I wanna do like my makeup or get ready outside, it's really nice to open these back doors and have my chair sitting here and then I can just sit outside and get ready outside in the van. Just because it's been winter and it's been really cold these past yeah. couple months, we've been kind of um, indoorsy. But now that we're getting great weather, just the other day we were out here for maybe five or six hours with all the doors open. Yeah. If it's just a nice day, out. we definitely try to have all the doors open. I mean, it feels better with the doors open if it's warm outside than it would with the doors closed because it'll just get kind of stuffy and yeah. warm quickly. Mm -hmm. So we prefer having the doors open, but coming off of a very cold, horrible winter, we, yeah, we weren't really able to do that as often these past couple months, but hopefully being on the west side now we can. We moved into the van in October, so we kind of, the first couple months was 
I mean, we didn't even know what it was really like to be comfortable and have the door <laughs> open. Like, sleeping with, like, without layers and layers of clothes is the greatest feeling. All right, so uh, this is the driver's side of our van. And um, so for privacy at night, we just like to hang up this curtain. Um, this was kind of one of the last things that we implemented and we were, as everyone, kind of running low with our budget and things like that. And so we already had the curtain. All we had to buy was this white string and it looks um, relatively low from inside the van but when you're on the ground outside the van you can't see anything above the curtain at all so it actually works really really well and it's a blackout curtain so it, it actually blacks um, the light as well that works pretty well for privacy yep and so behind here we have just some extra chairs that we use outside. Um, this is the tripod and his cook or his cutting board goes back there as well. On the other side in the same space, we have an extra table, an extra induction burner if he ever needs another one. Um, and that's also where we keep that uh, wooden board that finishes off the bed when we're making the bed. So yeah, that's just a little bit of extra space as well. Um, so driving the van is it's totally fine when you're on regular roads. When you're driving on interstate, you're driving anywhere where you're like even potholes things like that it's it's completely fine well, as soon as you get onto gravel rocky roads too many potholes things like that um it gets pretty rough and we go about 15 to 20 miles an hour for a very long time until we reach our destination so it's usually good but yeah there there's definitely been some times where it got pretty rough miles per gallon is about 24 so we get about 24 miles a gallon right now gas is a little bit higher on the west coast but you do what you can use gas buddy everybody that's my highest recommendation don't just buy gas right off the interstate download the apps and do what you can to save money there as well whenever it's early morning and we are going somewhere and i want to do my makeup for the day i wanted to come up with a little bit of a hack so edgar drives first in the morning and then i just put my magnet on the back of this mirror and it hooks up to this magnet on our car and I can just put it there and I do my makeup sitting in the passenger side. <laughs> So underneath the passenger side, there is a panel that you can take off and then the entire underneath of that seat is fully empty. And so we put all of our cleaning supplies and any extra paper towels, any extra like Clorox wipes, wet wipes, anything that we didn't want to take up space in the van, it all goes underneath that passenger side. And there's a lot, a lot of storage underneath there as well. Yeah, this is our only like cooling system for when it gets too hot in the van, which I mean, this was, I would say 10 to $12 on Amazon and it works so well. Like yeah. this, I mean, it takes almost no power. It hooks into that little um, panel that we have with all of our electrical. It has a super long cord so we can take it anywhere in the van while it's plugged up. But yeah, this is really our only like means of cooling and we haven't had any problems with it so far. And we've had some warm days, so. Thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, check me out at Edgar Coronado one on Instagram. And I'm Divine on the Road. I also have a website for anybody that has questions. Um, I've written a lot about our build and the different details and measurements. If you have questions, go ahead and find me on the contact page on my website, which is divineontheroad.com. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll give any measurements that you guys need. Pretty much anything. We're very open to helping people live this kind of lifestyle as well. So for Instagram, Facebook, um, for my website and everything, the links will be in the description below so you can find us there.